Good morning, everybody, and welcome. Welcome to a creative day here on Behance Live. Welcome to Adobe Live, where we're going to be looking at some excellent, excellent stuff in After Effects this morning. I'm Evan Abrams, and I will be guiding you on our little basic tour here. I hope you're having a chill time. I'm ready to, to drink a warm beverage and... Uh, get creative this morning. I'm seeing lots of people out there. We have people from Saudi Arabia. I'm seeing people from China. Uh, we got uh, Steve from New Zealand. <laughs> Good day. Oh, and we've got uh, Sierra Pick from Washington. Is that Washington State or Washington, D.C.? You know, let me know. I'm up here in fabulous Ottawa, Canada, uh, where it is cold, it is bright, and oh, Stephanie, waking up early in L.A. Hello. It's uh, so good to see everybody out here on the chat. Uh, this morning, like I said, we are going to be talking about After Effects. Now, After Effects is the software that I use all day, every day as a motion designer. And this morning, I want to just get into it and show you some of the basic tools. If you've never used After Effects before, if you've only opened it a few times, it can definitely be intimidating. And so this morning, I want to run you through some of the basics, getting to use things like the text animator, for example. And we're going to make some basic typography animation this morning. So it's going to be great. And uh, Anna in the chat mentioning we do have daily creative challenges. There's a lot of things going on here today. In fact, we've got a whole schedule of excellent events coming up. So after I'm done here. We're going to have Voodoo Val. She's coming up next with a Photoshop creative challenge. It's going to be fantastic. Um, they're going to be working with uh, Lightroom and Color to uh, change the mood of a photo. Then we've got video editing. If you can't get enough video, Jason Levine is up next. I love that guy. And then uh, we've got uh, Illustrator Design creative challenge with Paul Tranny. It's coming up after that. It's a, it's a rich full day, so stay with us. I think it's like seven hours of content around here. So, you know, if you're if you're hanging out, hang out and be creative with us. We'll teach you a lot of stuff. So, getting back to what we're doing today, like I said, we're talking about After Effects this morning. So, I want to know in the chat, you know, how much you've ever used After Effects, if this is something you've you've opened it up, uh, you know, and uh, Tim in the chat is letting us know that, that the schedule, uh, we're, there may be some updates that we got to we got to make there, but we will uh, We'll, we'll get to it, but stick with us because the day is going to be amazing anyway. It's going to be fantastic. So, like I said, in the chat, let me know if you've, uh, you know, never opened up After Effects before. Let me know where your uh, comfort level is with this software, and we will we'll try to get you through. And, of course... Ask any questions you have. If stuff comes up and and you don't you don't uh, you're not sure what we're doing, why we're doing something, you know, let me know because I want this to be uh, I want this to be a, a chill experience for everyone. Uh, that's why I'm using my chill radio voice today. So I'm seeing a lot of beginners, a lot of newbies. So that's perfect. You're in the right place. We're gonna have a great time. Uh, and. If you are watching this on YouTube, then, you know, come and come and see us on behance.net slash live so that I can uh, see your see your chat in here because I want to I want to see what's up. Um, this is fantastic. Oh, this is good. We've got we've got all the great people hanging out in here. <laughs> oh, and, and, and uh, you know, some people have have seen uh, my tutorials. So if you've ever been to YouTube.com slash EC Abrams, then uh, thanks for coming out. Always great to see Always great to see folks. So, oh, and some people have never even opened it. So today is your morning. <laughs> Tim, Tim in the chat, cracking me up this morning. Always, you know, yeah. <laughs> After, Effects, After Effects is more afraid of you than you are of it. So we just have to approach it gently. And we're going to do that this morning. So I'm going to, I'm going to be sharing my screen here so that you can enjoy uh, what we're doing. You can follow along. So here, uh, here's kind of, how After Effects looks. If you've, if you've never opened it before, and or maybe it's your first time opening it, you know, there's all these windows. It can be fairly intimidating. What even are these things? What are we doing? Well, I'll take you through some of the basics here. Over here, we have the project window. This is where anything you import or anything that you create at a project level lives. Today, we won't have to touch that very much because we're not going to import anything. We're going to make everything right in the app itself. So we don't have to bring in any video, no images, nothing. This is going to be all made right in here. Next to that, I have the composition window. If you've used Photoshop or Illustrator, you can think of this like your canvas or your artboard. This is where all of the manipulation of space happens. 
And then down here, we've got the timeline, and the timeline is something very unique to After Effects. Uh, it may be similar to how you see a timeline in Premiere, but everything is vertical rather than horizontal. We have layers rather than tracks. So, you know, it, it has a lot of points that are familiar, like, uh, oh, this seems like uh, we're looking at Photoshop, or it's similar to Illustrator, but it's its own unique stuff. And in particular, we're going to be dealing with a lot of things called properties. Now, now all layers have properties, and this is what we change over time to create motion. So that's kind of the big, uh, the, the big shift here in After Effects is it's all about, all about motion, all about change over time, and it's all about these layers. So let me show you really quick uh, what I worked up just this morning, just a few minutes, just a few minutes this morning, and just just me hanging out here. If you came to this from Twitter, then you've seen this little preview. So, you know, this is a little bit of text animation. Now it's, it's a little bit complex and, and we're gonna drive towards getting to something like this, but this is the kind of simple text animation that we're talking about today. Nothing super crazy. It's a little bit of, a little bit of bounce, a little bit of fine control, and uh, we're just gonna be layering some things on. So. Like we said, there's a lot of people in the chat who have never opened After Effects before. So we are gonna be taking this pretty slow. We are going to be, you know, back to basics. We're, we're, I'm gonna imagine that, that, that most folks have never opened, opened this before and we're gonna make sure that, that you get where you wanna go. So anytime we wanna make something in After Effects, we need to make a new composition, we call it. Now compositions are the space where we do our work, where we make things and a lot of times people wonder, well, what what size of composition do I make? Should, how big should this be? Well, this should be the size that you intend to export this thing or to make use of this. So I wanna work in something that is square. I, I love, you know, one by one kind of Instagram things. I love square video. It's kind of, it was very novel a while ago, but I'm, I'm, I'm really into things that are square and it's nice and simple for us. So we could work in a square composition. Or you can choose any of these presets like HDTV, 1080, 24 frames a second. This is one of the most common ones that gets used. And I just wanna mention this because this frame size, the width and height is important. And the frame rate, how many frames per second we end up seeing is important. And the duration here, how long is this comp gonna be? But never get too hung up on this because you can always come back and change it later. Everything about After Effects is non-destructive. So we can always come back and change it later. Everything, everything is fine, everything is safe. So, so we're gonna create this and the duration, let's just say five seconds. Um, and uh, Newer is asking, the animations, uh, when they're done, can they only be exported in video formats? So in general, After Effects exports as a video file of some kind. Uh, so that might be an MP4, that might be, um, I'll go back to my face. Um, so that might be like an MP4 file. That might be um, that might be like a GIF, like an animated GIF or GIF. Uh, we, we don't, we're not going to start. We're not going to start GIF talk today. But um, or an image, an image sequence you can export. Now, Noor, you might be you might be thinking, well, what about web? What about HTML5? What about you know? Can I send this stuff? Um, to like an SWF kind of export, like you would have had at a flash. Well, we often need like a third party uh, exporter for some of those things. In particular, if you're doing this animation for web, I would really recommend you look into, uh, you look into something called Body Movin', which is a fantastic, uh, fantastic exporter. So, um, and <laughs> Tim says it's okay to be wrong. And that's right. Here here in the here in the creative mornings, it's okay to be wrong. Now, Bullseye is asking, um, should you set your composition settings to what your final video output is going to be? Usually, right? So let's go back into, into my screen here. And oh, you're very welcome, Noor. And, and everyone asks questions. We want to make sure that everyone is everyone is is getting what they want to know today. So um, your composition settings should be how you're going to use the comp. Sometimes we do compositions nested inside of each other. When you go on to make something for final export, for example, you would probably label it export comp and make that the size and frame rate that you want to send out. When working on a project, 
in, when you get into more advanced things, you might be creating comps that are incredibly long or that are incredibly tall for more utilitarian uses. Um, but for us, for today's simplicity, let's just make it the size that we want to export and uh, we'll go from there. Because we get into a lot of like pre-comping and, and comps within comps, real Russian nesting doll of, or a Matryoshka doll. Let me know in the comments uh, what those what those dolls that are inside of each other are called. Um, and, uh, you know, we'll do it up. And Ali, you don't need uh, Premiere Pro to export and render. Um, in fact, you can render right out of After Effects. You can just add it. Um, you can go add to render queue. You can add to the media encoder. So the media encoder does most of the heavy lifting usually, um, but often uh, we'll use the render queue right out of After Effects. Um, if, you're, if you're in a more advanced Premiere type pipeline, then definitely. Um, and then, uh, you know, the big question of, uh, of do we bounce this into Photoshop for the final format? I actually don't. I usually just render right out of After Effects most of the time uh, because that's, that's what I'm creating. But if I'm creating uh, one, of those <laughs> one of those GIFs um, out there, I will probably end up, um, I'll probably end up using a third party thing. Babushka doll, is a grandma doll, it's wonderful. Ah, Tim, Tim, you're always bringing the facts, I love it. So let's get into it, let's get into text. How does After Effects deal with text? Well, there's many ways. You can just grab the old text tool up here and you can click out on your timeline. Up here at the top are the, are the, is the toolbar. You know, that's, that's where all your tools are. And you can grab the text tool or you can hit T. Uh, you can hit, uh, what is it, Command T, I think bring, brings us up here. Yeah, there you go, Command T will bring this up. And we're just gonna click out here and it creates horizontal, horizontal uh, text. And it creates a little layer down here on the timeline, right? And then you can start typing in anything, anything you want, right? So you can type, type out all kinds of things. So let's imagine we're making a title of something, you know? How do we start altering the properties of what we've created here? Now, I'm gonna say you can also right click in the void of your timeline go new text you can go layer new text you can right click over here new text there's about 50 ways to do any one thing but the big thing is grab your text tool or create the text layer and uh, and start to <laughs> start typing them out <laughs> pesting dolls <laughs> uh, in the people in the chat have the best puns uh here on on behance live so just uh just remember, just remember that you may find me uh, laughing sometimes just because people say the funniest things. So, so that's one way we can make the text. We're going to stick with simple text for now. And down here, you see, we have this character panel and you can dock this anywhere you'd like. Um, you can, you can push it over here, for example, if you wish, whoa, now the interface is getting crazy. Um, like this, and you can rearrange your interface however you like. This is the character palette. And then we also have the paragraph palette. So these are the two things that generally will govern uh, the attributes of this text. So you can be changing your font size. You can be changing your uh, your letting, your kerning. Um, you can you can have all kinds of these changes. Uh, some ligatures. I don't think this font has ligatures, but. Everything you want to change about your text is up here. And this is probably very familiar to anyone who is using uh, Photoshop or Illustrator. This panel looks pretty much the same anywhere. Similar with the paragraph, uh, that looks pretty much the same anywhere. And oh, <laughs> and uh, Ali is asking about my weird green boxes. So uh, that is the proportional grid uh, that we're looking at. So I'm usually working with that on um, just because I don't like to guess where elements are. You can toggle your proportional grid on and off uh, down here, this little bit right here, boop, proportional grid. Or you can go with the regular grid um, and you'll notice that my uh, proportional grid um, is in um, sixths. Uh, it is in, in sixths. Uh, and you can change that in your preferences. So you can go up here to your preferences whenever you like. And grab those over here. And where are they? Do, do, do. Grids and guides. So if you need to change those up and, uh, you know, that'll be all good. So you can you can change these things up in there. And hopefully that helps. So 
Uh, we got people asking about uh, using scripts a major part of animating After Effects. No, 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 not at all. Most animation you can accomplish in After Effects using our two friends, keyframes and expressions. So today we're gonna use keyframes. I don't wanna scare anyone with expressions. That's the last thing I wanna do today. I wanna to keep it chill this morning and we are going to use keyframes. So that's, uh, there you go. So we're gonna, we're gonna animate this text using text animators. So now we kind of know um, how to create text and how to type out how we want. Um, and and we can do all kinds of things. And, and Rick is asking, what are the advantages of text editing in After Effects compared to Premiere? So Premiere has uh, that titler, right? That kind of uh, text, um, text titling thing, which can, you can do some things in it, definitely. But for more advanced nuanced things, after Effects is where to go. Uh, After Effects has a lot more tools for uh, more complex uh, titles, interactions, more fine control, uh, especially of keyframes, because it has the beautiful graph editor, which we'll get into uh, all of that. So the big thing is that After Effects is really made for this kind of thing. So it's purpose built. Oh my goodness, this early in the day, I have to really drink all drink the tea. Mm. So we've got this thing written out here. The paragraph panel. Sorry, I got I got <laughs> I got sidetracked before we started talking about the paragraph panel. So the paragraph panel. You might be used to doing text in in other applications uh, where we start clicking on the paragraph panel. Notice that the text is moving. Ooh, ah, ooh. Why is it moving all over the place? If I move it to the left or to the middle, or to the right. So. This can sometimes confuse people, and I just wanted to mention that this anchor point here, you see this little little dot right in here? This is the anchor point, right? And the anchor point is like its reference. This is where the text knows it is in the world. Um, this is its home. This is, uh, this is where everything is based off of. And when we start changing the paragraph, if we go left aligned, then we are aligning ourselves along that home, right? And then we're gonna go center aligned. Okay, now we're aligned along that that home, right? So that's that's what we're that's where we're relative to. So always keep that in mind with our paragraph, and that should be good about. If you have any questions about these panels, go ahead and you and you let me know. But I want to I want to animate this thing. I want to show you how to animate this text. So we're gonna twirl down, and we're gonna twirl down. Whenever we twirl into things, we're going deeper into the properties of that thing. So in this layer, when we twirl down, we get to know things about this layer. And in here you see two categories, transform and text. All layers have transform. If I were to create a new solid, I will make it the comp size, and let's just make it a nice distinct uh, color here. How about a nice, a nice common cornflower blue? How about that? So we'll just put that out there. And you know, this, when you twirl into it, it has transform uh, properties as well. Um, and you know, it, we have the same, that's the same, same, same. You know, this part of the layers, totally normal, right? And that's, that's very um, regular. I'm gonna take this grid off just cause it's probably distracting us. Um, and so these are the same. Uh, we don't need to see that cyan thing anymore. Um, and the thing that's unique about text layers is they have their own thing here that called, that's called text. And in it, you see a property, right? And so here is the property of source text, which is what we've typed in here. So the property of source text covers, uh, covers everything that you've done in here, everything you've done in here that is completely compiled into the source text. So it's holding a lot of information in there. So if you were to edit something about the source text, then this property would change. Um, now we got some great questions coming in here. Are there any other file formats that can be imported into After Effects for animation apart from uh, Illustrator files? Absolutely. Uh, you can get some PSDs in here. Uh, you can get pretty much any image format that you want. Um, you can get uh, pretty much any kind of video format. Um, there are a lot of there are a lot of uh, new 3D layers and stuff we can bring in here. Uh, Cineware, uh, Cinema 4D files. Oh my goodness, the the things that can go in here that, that After Effects can catch and do something with 
is is really crazy. So definitely check out uh, the full list. You can also bring in Flash uh, files, I believe. I think it's SWFs that you would pull in uh, into your workflow. So definitely check that out. If you're familiar with other After Effects applications, you'll be surprised uh, how all of them kind of work together. You know, it's a, it's a family, it's an ecosystem. And Arian is asking, uh, how do we move the anchor point to be in the center? So that's an interesting question. We can always move the anchor point. We did talk a bit about anchor points. We can always grab the pan behind tool here and we can grab it and we can just move it around. If you want to uh, snap this into the middle like this, you can always hold command and snap it to all sorts of places. If you want the anchor point to dynamically always be in the middle center, Oh, that's going to be, that's going to be something for, for another day. That's, that's some advanced stuff. Oh boy. Well, when we're talking expressions, maybe we'll get into that, but not, not today. Um, but let's, how do we animate this? Right. And After Effects would like to tell you right here, now it's time to animate. And, uh, now we want to go here and when we we're choosing, we're choosing what property about the text, um, what property do you want to change over time? So what do you want to animate about this? I think for our purposes, let's animate the position. And as soon as you do that, it creates animator one and it creates a range selector and ooh, oh my goodness, all this advanced stuff. Oh boy, this is, <laughs> this is crazy. So we're getting all sorts of things in here. Oh boy, what does any of this mean, right? <laughs> you feel me out there, you've seen this. Um, so, um, Oh, and the question, uh, how do you put the text vertically? If you want vertical text, I mean, you could rotate it, but that's not really vertical text. All you have to do is hold down on the text tool and go down to vertical text. You'll be typing vertically in no time. So it's right there, right under the regular speed text, uh, right there. So uh, hopefully that helps. Fantastic. <laughs> uh, so um, we were talking about animators and we've got animator one out here. And just doing that doesn't do anything, right? There's like nothing going on. So we need to apply a positional change right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just increase this number here and I'm gonna put this to 200, right? So you'll notice that all of the text has now been moved by 200. Well, why? Why is all of the text just moved that much? Well. It's because of this thing called the range selector. Now I'm gonna change the color of my layer just so I can hopefully, hopefully you can see uh, what's happening here a little bit better. When you look at your text layer, you have this range selector and the range selector is shown visually by these two bars here. And I'm going to move them, I'm gonna move those bars. So here we go, I'm gonna pinch them in. So this is the range of the text that we are uh, selecting, that we are choosing. And we are choosing this text here because this is you know, at 13% and 73%. We're squeezing in that range selector. And then what are we doing to what's in that range? Well, we're changing its position by this much. So that's the core of what is happening. We are selecting with the range selector and then we're doing something to it with this, with, with whatever is down here. Now that could mean, uh, that could mean that, um, the position is changing. It could mean that the opacity is changing. It, it's whatever we've put down here is being applied to that group by some rules. So hopefully, hopefully that kind of makes sense about what's going on, right? That, that's kind of, uh, kind of the idea. Um, but then how do we use this to animate anything, right? Well, sometimes we would do it, let's say, uh, we just wanted to affect one of the words here, right? We can go into advanced and we can decide, um, how the range selector is working. So right now it's based on percentage. What percentage of this text are we affecting? Well, we can change that to be index. So index is just number. So in this case, we are counting the characters. So we're counting the characters. And so at two, the start of the range is at two in and the end of it is at 12 in. And that's what we get. We could have characters excluding, excluding spaces. We could have words. So if we do words, we could have the start uh, be at one. Oh, a 10, don't do that at one. And the end be at two. And now we've selected this word, right? That, that makes sense, right? 
and or we could go to zero and we could go to one and then we could offset that by one and now we've selected the word you uh, just like that so there are so many ways we could be animating stuff in here right and it's all about changing these values okay but just something to look at is what happens when I play with this offset value that just changing this offset value is causing something to happen. Interesting, right? That's, that's something. It's not nothing. Um, so, you know, I would really encourage you, if you're unfamiliar with the text editor, to just play around with these values, see what happens, get a really firm understanding of what is happening with that. And then we dive into the advanced space, which is notably quite advanced. So I'm gonna to try to avoid this for as long as possible, and we'll probably come back to it. But for now, what I wanna do is to just make the text go from, down, from being down to being up. That's it, I just want the text to go from down there to up there. So how would I do that? Well, if we put the end to zero, so the range is selecting nothing, and it's all the way over here, and I've set a keyframe, you set a keyframe by clicking the little stopwatch. And then we can set another keyframe over here and I'm gonna set this to the number three. So now we've selected everything. Boop, boop, boop. So now everything is being selected and being applied this position change. Right? That's what's happening. So we're going from selecting nothing to selecting everything. All the text is going down. Now, what we could do instead, instead of animating uh, the end, let's put the an animate this to three, so everything is selected at the start, and then we could animate the start. So again, we're setting keyframes by clicking the stopwatch, and then we're moving this ahead to three, and then what's it doing? Up, up, up. I feel like, I feel like I'm, I'm maybe animating Sesame Street here. Uh, up, 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 down, down, down which I think is the kind of, kind of calming energy we could really use today. Um, so now we've got the text going up, 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 right? And we are, more, most importantly, most importantly, we would be going from, we would be going from having everything selected to having nothing selected, right? Because the range selector is now selecting nothing and it's moved through the whole text. Right, so we've basically been moved, we've, we've gone to the state that we had at the beginning before we applied any text animators, right? So you can think of this like we're applying a bunch of things to it and then we are, ooh, I'm bumping the microphone, sorry. And then we, and then we, are, we are taking that away, we're removing all of our changes to it. <laughs> And, uh, and so, um, and so what we're going to be doing is we're just pushing this through and now we end up at the state we had at the beginning, right? Which we assume would be the composition or how you want the, the text to end up, what we would call the end state. Um, so we're going to go from this state to this state. Ah, oh, wonderful, relaxing, calming. And, you know, this isn't much of a text reveal at this point. Oh, this isn't revealing any text. I don't know what I think about this. Um, and, uh, Ali is asking that, you know, their start and end is in a percentage. So we talked about that a little bit with this advanced area. So I'm working with the index value, uh, of the words. So the unit we're talking about is the index value or which word, because we're talking about words. Now I could shift this, right? I could change this to percent and I could change this to character, right? Whoop. And then it would go like that because now we're we're changing the unit that we're talking about. We're talking about characters and we're talking about percentage of the total characters. Now, what's great about that, why I'm sure the big question comes up, like, why would we why would we do one and not the other? Right? Why would we do index or why would we do percentage? Right. And the big thing is that by percentage. I could change this to be 10 words. I could change this to be 20 words. I could change this to be however many words I want. And it wouldn't matter because it's based on percentage. But if everything's based on the index and I end up typing in a different number of words, then the index values have changed. So for example, let's change this out to be um, sunshine is nice in summer. See, see everyone, we're having chill vibes today. Um, 
And so I'm just going to shrink this down to a different text. So sunshine is nice in summer. And so you notice that the animation is still the same over the percentage of this thing. So that's the idea behind percentage versus index. Because now, if we were still using index and words, this is one, two, three, four, five, and the other animation and the other text was one, two, three, right? So that's why you might use one and not the other. So hopefully that kind of clears up, you know, index versus uh, percentage and why. But again, oh, I want to stay out of that. I want to stay out of that advanced tab for as much as possible. Now, how would we make this a transition of some kind? Well, I want to introduce you to masks. Masks are your friend. We all wear masks in our day, and now the text will wear one too. And so we take the text and we draw a mask around it, and masks define the visual area that you can see of a layer. And we're selecting this area. That's where we want to see. And our animation started with the text being below that line. Oh, and here it comes. It's, it's, it's showing up from the bottom of the screen. Oh, so nice to see you there. Um, now, warning, I am going to go, I'm going into the advanced tab again. I'm going to change this to words because I, I, I much prefer boop, boop, beep, and words to come up like that. So, so now it's coming up into the box like this. Now, that's a little bit clunky, isn't it? Wouldn't you say? I, personally, for me, that's a little bit clunky. And why is it clunky, we might say, or why is it, um, why is it not uh, smooth? Why is this animation not smooth? And that's because everything is very linear. And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and yeah, it's, the style of animation that we're dealing with here is, is that everything is right now not eased at all. And uh, if you came here from, from my tweet, then you know we want, to, we want to take it easy here. We want, to, we want to ease things. Now, what is easing? What am I talking about with easing? Well, I'm going to give you an example really quick because I want, I want to explain easing because easing is a really important uh, subject in animation. If I were to animate the position of this circle, woo, from here to there, right? Clunk. That has, a, that has a very clunky feel to it as well, right? Clunk. Well, if I take these keyframes and I ease them, which you can do by hitting F9 or keyframe assistant, and then you ease them, an eased keyframe, ah, oh, it does not just feel nice and soft. Oh, so good that it's just, ah, it's easing, right? It's easing into the end, it's easing from the beginning. And we talked a little bit about, someone had a question about why After Effects and not Premiere for animating this kind of thing. Well, a lot of that comes down to the nuances of animation. I just click this little button here to look at the graph editor. I know I, I said we wouldn't do anything scary today, but but we have, well, I, I just wanna show you the graph editor really quick here. Uh, the graph editor shows us what is happening to a property over time on a graph. It can be hard to visualize what's happening, so the graph editor can help us do that. This is a graph of the speed over time, and we can modify this graph to change that speed over time. So now we get a different character of motion, a different form of easing, and these handles are telling us how much influence each state has over that property, right? So, so you can tell by how uh, far this handle is, how eased something is. So that's that's our little primer on easing, and and you know I, I didn't want to I didn't want to freak anybody out with that, but I think it's important to talk about because in our text animator we have easing as well. We can ease in the advanced tab, and it uses the phrases ease high and ease low. What do these <laughs> what do these mean? I I am a, I'm quite a risk taker. Absolutely, I'm a, I live a dangerous life uh, out here out here in the wilds of suburban Ottawa, Canada. <laughs> so what does easing mean? Well, let's change the ease low value here up to 100%. We're going to crank it up to 100%. What does ease low mean when we look at it? Hmm. It means that on the low end things are eased. And for us, that means in the end of this thing, right? So what I'm going to do, just because I, I want us to be able to see the difference, right? I'm going to create another duplicate and I'm going to move it up here. You can duplicate layers by just uh, 
selecting them, hitting Command or Control D, depending on what kind of machine you're on. <laughs> Here I adjust my classes. And on this duplicate, on its animator, in its advanced, we're not going to ease low at all. We're going to set that back to zero. And I want you to see the difference in how they look, how they how these two animate on and look different from each other, right? This one's a lot smoother, right? Yeah, it makes it fluid. Um, <laughs> oh, Genevieve, also from Ottawa. Hello. Uh, I hope you're hope you're having a good time here in the NCR and uh, you know staying safe. So it's uh, it's great to see it's great to see local people. G Genevieve, if you're in Ottawa. Have we, have we seen you at our motion design meetups? Let me know. You, you let me know. And and if not, join the local Ottawa motion meetup. Uh, we're on Facebook. We're doing virtual stuff right now. So it's great. Um, so, so you can see how it smooths it out, right? And I think it's important to play around and understand what this value means, what ease low and ease high means. So on this duplicate here, uh, let's ease high. I'm going to ease high on that one. Um, and here's what's Im something important to know. <laughs> ease low and ease high can go from 100% to negative 100%. And this starts to get really confusing about, wait, what, what does a negative 100 ease mean? What, what is that? Um, and, uh, you know, oh, and, uh, and, you know, if, uh, if people are, p people need to jump out or whatever, you know, don't worry. There's seven hours of amazing programming, maybe even more hours going on right here. So come back later and see what else is going on. And if you, if you miss anything, um, th this is going to be archived for all time and all space. Uh, so go to Behance and see our replays of this stuff. If you miss something, if you come in late, it's totally fine. Um, and, <laughs> uh, we've got, uh, Ryan Benoit, uh, oh, down in, uh, Louisiana from Nova Scotia. Uh, Ryan, are you an Acadian? Is, is that your, uh, ancestry? Um, it's, uh, always great to see fellow Canadians around the internet, but let's get back to this. Let's get back to this text stuff. Um, so we're talking about easing and we're talking about how that really improves, um, almost 12 hours, including German, UK, and French streams. Tim, that's so much content. Um, so uh, so that's the easing function, right? And hopefully that makes sense. Now, once you've got things set up in here, that range selector is doing all of the lifting. So I just want to reiterate again, the only thing we're animating, the only thing that changes in here the value that changes for us is only this range selector. That's the only element that is actually changing. Everything else is instructions on how things should behave, right? So with that in mind, what else could we add to this if we wanted to make this more complex? Well, we've got position happening. Well, at the same time, let's add opacity to the mix. Why not? So we'll set that opacity down to zero so that these things have a little bit of an opacity change over time. So you can kind of see as they start to come in, you know, here towards the bottom, that they are, they are coming up like that. So, you know, you've got, you've got them fading on as they come up. And most critically, most critically to remember is that the ch position and opacity state that you're asking it to have, right? Both of these are being treated the same way. They're both getting that same easing, that same, um, the same behavior is happening to them because they're both together and it's the range selector that is changing. So that's critical to remember. Um, so just like that. Now, if we wanted to soften this up even more, we might modify our mask and stuff, but that's, that's a problem for another day about masking, which hopefully, hopefully we do, uh, we do get to, um, But, folks, we're about at the halfway point, so it's time time to take it to the next level. Time to get a little bit um, time to get a little bit uh, advanced, you would say. Now we're going to we're gonna get into that advanced zone properly. I'm gonna just delete this mask because I want us to be able to see this whole thing. No, no questions asked about what's going on in here. Um, well, you know what? If you have questions, always ask them. But you know, I just want to make sure that this thing is super clear about what's going on. And I'm going to remove the opacity because, again, I think that might confuse the rest of this lesson here. 
And I'm just going to increase this value here a little bit so that it's a little bit more extreme what we're seeing here. Okay. So in the advanced area, we talked about units. We talked about words. Now we're going to talk about mode. What is this mode? That what, is it? <laughs> what do you mean mode? Well, the mode means, uh, means to add. Um, <laughs> oh, <laughs> Aaron, Aaron's giving a shout out to the uh, the Quitters uh, coffee shop. That is the coffee shop that uh, I actually frequent. So we're getting we're getting some hyper local Ottawa stuff going on in the chat today, which I love. Um, you know that that's that was my favorite place uh, uh, to go to. It's right down the road. So um, this mode. What does mode mean? Well, add. Add means that everything in that range selector is being added to what's to to the selection. Okay, so everything at this point from zero to hundred is being added to the group that we are doing position change to. So if I move to this point where it's 40 40 percent of it. Um, so this much in between the arrows is being added, right? Watch what happens when I go from add to subtract. The inverse is what's happening, right? Because everything inside the selection is being taken away from what we're changing. So as that shrinks, the reverse is happening. So at the beginning, if you remember, we were playing with the end. We were, we were animating the end uh, of the range selector, and it was doing basically this. So I want you to keep these ideas in mind, that some things add, some things subtract, and that you can do that. We also have intersect, min, max, difference. For now, let's just stick with add and subtract. If you're, if you're comfortable with Boolean operations, you could take two range selectors and you could intersect them with each other. You could take two range selectors and take the minimum or maximum of them. You could take the difference of them. Too much for today, too much. We just wanna have a chill morning. Add and subtract, leave it there. When you're comfortable with that, you move on at your own speed, all right? So let's stick with add, right? Amount, what does amount mean? Well, amount is how much is this actually affecting anything? If this were at zero, if the amount were at zero, then nothing is happening. Nothing, because the amount is none. And if we wanted to have an inverse kind of relationship, we could do minus 100. So, you know, now the position is pushing things up rather than taking them down. So that's amount. I don't play with amount too often, but it's something to think about when you're, when you're getting in there. So that's just what it does. But this next one here is square. Now, the shape, what does it mean about the shape? What is, what are we talking about? Shape. There's no shape here. And, uh, you know, it is, uh, there's no shapes. What, what do I mean by shape? Well, shape, if we were to do a graph of how this stuff is, um, how this stuff is being applied, we would say it is squarely being applied. It's kind of a visual math thing. You'll see what I mean here when I change it to triangle. What does triangle mean? All right, so right now, and I'm gonna change the ease low to zero. Okay, um, doo -doo -doo -doo. yeah. So so right now we're gonna look at, and I'm, I'm gonna change it to characters because this is gonna illustrate it. <laughs> now it's a triangle, now, thing, now things are seeming more normal. So triangle is the shape that's being applied here. The values over here are at like zero, and over here, the values are at like 100% of the values, right? If I go to square, now we can kind of see what the square is, right? And you know what? Let me actually bump this in and bump this in. Now, I know that this S is kind of hanging, right? Because it's on the edge. It's on the boundary of, of being selected or not selected. So it's being partially selected, even though we are dealing with the square. Now I'm gonna to change to the triangle. Now you can see the triangle, right? Eh, triangle. And now we can offset the triangle. Whee! Offset the triangle through the thing. So this is what happens if you would scrub the offset. Isn't this fun? Or 
maybe we go to round. Round very similar to the triangle, right? And I'll just offset that round bit. Whoop, whoo, kind of like that, okay? What else have we got? Smooth. Yeah, smooth is like a bell curve, like a parabola. Parabola. Yes, that's, I'm going to pronounce parabola. That's the way I want to do it. Um, and we can push the parabola all the way through. It's doing a wave. Isn't that fun? You know? And this is a simple way to just push a wave of whatever through the thing. So that's smooth. Now, these two here, I would like them pushed to the bottom of the list. Um, this is not even in alphabetical order. <laughs> that's fine. That's, that's between me and, and someone else. But ramp up and ramp down behave a little bit differently. Because you'll notice that now over here is down, over here is up. The shape that is happening in the middle is ramping up and down. <laughs> Are the sound effects uh, included when you install After Effects? Um, over time, if you use After Effects for too many hours a day uh, and for too long, eventually you become like me <laughs> and, you, and you, make, uh, you make a lot of stuff, make a lot of face noises, all right? So that's what we end up with. Okay. Whoa. So this is the ramp that we're pushing through, right? Ramp we usually use a little bit differently than, than the other shapes because rather than um, growing or shrinking, um, <laughs> growing or shrinking our, our selection, we usually push the ramp through is what we're doing. So we're usually pushing a ramp through using the offset to animate it rather than the start and the end. Now, by default, by default, we usually start with the square stuff because that's, that's just the default, the way it goes. You're just applying to a selection. I much prefer the ramp up and ramp down, all right? And, you know, that's, that's where I'm at because it creates this nice smooth gradation. Now, this is also where you are able to see what ease low and ease high means, okay? So what, what does ease low and ease high mean when we start um, pushing this information through, okay? So let me just, oh no, everything's being weird. So right now we've selected everything. I'm gonna clear our keyframes. We've selected everything and we're using the ramp up, okay? Everything's selected, we got the ramp up. What happens if we start easing low? Ooh, hello. Okay, so if we ease low, it starts to take on this shape. Okay, I'm with you. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna push that offset through. Ah, okay, okay, I'm with you. So let me make a range selector here that selects from zero to twenty-five. Okay, so the range selector is only selecting 25% of the text. Now what I'm going to animate is the offset. I'm going to animate the offset from negative 25, pushed all the way out. It's, it's pushed all the way over here, and it's going to animate up to 100. It's going to push all the way through. Now I'm just going to move these keyframes, selecting and dragging them. And so I'm pushing that selection all the way through. Push? How fun is this? Oh, what a, what a nice push. And we're just pushing that all the way through. And you can see visually what this easing is doing. So I'm going to set it to zero. See how linear that is? Mm. Oh my goodness. And now if we ease it on the low end, it's easing into its place. Now what if instead we ease it on the high end? Right? What if we ease it on the high end? Well, now it's going to be like sticky on the on the bottom here. Stick snap, right? So it's like sticking and snapping. What if we ease them both? <laughs> what if what if we ease them both? <laughs> then we end up with this. We end up with with this kind of a, a harsher curve, and you can almost you can almost see the curve in here, right? You can almost see that line that's happening right there. So hopefully that explains what easing high and low is. Mm. So Alexandra's asking, what is the point of doing this with offset instead of changing the endpoint of the selector? So a lot of this is about changing the character and quality of what things are doing. 
So I would like to have this gradual change in things. So that's why I'm using the ramp up and ramp down. Now, here's what it looks like when I animate uh, pushing the thing through. I'm gonna duplicate this because I want us to be able to see the difference. Very important to visualize uh, the difference, especially when learning. So I highly recommend when you're playing around with things, rather than deleting and changing things, just um, just go ahead and duplicate and create a new uh, a new layer so you can see better or worse. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is instead of animating the offset, which I'll put back to zero, what we're going to do is we are going to animate. Um, Boop, 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 boop. I might need to actually separate these. Let's get, let's get these things a little bit more separated from each other. So, so I'm uh, I'm I'm tapping the uh, the U key here to uh, to show uh, all of my keyframes, uh, and you can hit the U key twice, and it'll bring up everything you've changed about a layer. Okay. So let's see. Actually, you know what? I want these both to be on on screen to kind of show this. So I'm just gonna alter my numbers a little bit. Okay, and then we'll get back into it. We're coming back, we're coming back to it, okay. Here we go, okay. Sorry about that, a little, little bit of a digression. So, like we said, this one is being animated with the offset. We're pushing that offset through, okay? And then, we are going to twirl open here. Again, we're going back into that into that uh, animator, animator one here. And the question was, what if we animated the end point of the selector instead? Which we will now do. We'll animate it from zero all the way up to 100. So we would end up with this shape if we were continuing to use the ramp, uh, the ramp up and down thing. So what we would end up with is this shape because when everything is selected, what we have selected with the range selector is what we are applying um, that shape to, those properties with that shape. Um, so we would end up with this. So when we play these back together, it gets kind of like that because we're growing the selection rather than moving the selection through. So if you wanted to animate using the start and end of something, you would probably want to use either the square shape instead, in fact, probably only the square shape, um, because that behaves in that way, right? That behaves in a way that once everything is selected, the whole thing has been uh, applied, right? The whole, the whole thing is, is, is taking on those properties that we've asked it to do. So hopefully uh, that kind of clears up. Now, why would we use one method instead of another? Well, I like to use, I really like to use the ramp up because it creates this uh, wave uh, going through. So for example, um, the text loop that we would, that you would have seen uh, this morning, if we were, uh, if you, uh, if you follow me on Twitter, had EC Abrams on there, then you would have seen this interesting thing going on. We're just using the, um, we're just using the, that ramp up to push through here. That's all that's happening. We're just pushing a ramp up through here and it creates this lovely wave now. Now, I'll be honest with you. I'm not just I'm not just using one text animator. No, not content with just one text animator. I have applied three text animators uh, to this text because I am a lunatic. Um, but by applying these three text animators, what each of them are doing, one of them is pushing everything up, and then that pushes them down, and then the third one pushes them back. So there's there's three of them going through, and then I'm also animating the I'm animating the uh, anchor point so that this thing kind of floats up this whole time, and then we're animating the opacity as well. So there's a lot of overlapping keyframes and nuance there, but all of it, all of this. It's just more of the stuff that we've already covered. It's just more layers of the same thing. So all this stuff is, is just more iterations of the same basic fundamentals. And when you have a firm grasp of the fundamentals, you start to layer them on more and more on top of each other as it goes. Now, 
Granted, there are other methods uh, in order to accomplish this as well. You might be using the expression selector. Don't don't use don't use the expression selector just yet. It's it's a bit early. It's a bit early in the day uh, to be doing that. But you know, it's definitely one way to go about it. Um, but but there are. I'm going to say that in After Effects. Hold on. Where's where's my camera? <laughs> there there it is. I'm going to say that there is no one perfect right way uh, to do anything in After Effects. Um, it's very subjective. Um, there are there are all kinds of methods to achieve similar uh, looks with varying degrees of flexibility and accuracy. So one thing that I think is very important to remember is that there are there are many ways to arrive at the same kind of look or at the same kind of motion so the way you do it might be different from someone else or the the methods that it takes for you to get to somewhere um, may be different depending on the project and and the various challenges that you're trying to solve so just remember there's no there's no one only way uh, to achieve things especially as we've talked about uh, here in the text animator so that's my that's my talk to camera uh, today so, um, so let's get back. Let's get back into this. I want to continue our adventures in text animators. So, we were talking about. Um, so we were talking about uh, animating this text up in this nice fashion. Um, and Ali is asking, will this be completed uh, in this part or in part two? Um, the great thing about text animation is we can kind of call it wherever we'd like. Um, but what I think we're going to do is today we're going to animate some text and tomorrow, tomorrow we are going to get into some uh, looping backgrounds. So it's, I mean, it's nice to, uh, uh, I mean, it's great to, to just uh, animate some text, but if we just have it on a black background, that's no good. So tomorrow we're going to add some more elements into the scene and we're going to talk about effects and looping things and all that but today we're going to focus on the basics of text animation because once you get this like once you once you are down with text animators oh my goodness like you could there are some people who who go no further in in after effects and the thing they use it for is only animating text so you know it you can you can spend so much time just mastering this one tool uh in here and it, it it opens up a whole world of creativity with just this one thing, um, and uh, anyway, that's that's my spiel on the on the text animator. It's uh, one of my it was one of my favorite tools uh, when I started out because it uh, really baked my potato. Um, so we were talking about um, animating this up, right, and that we are ramping up this uh, movement of the thing, right. I mean, wrap up text. We've only we'll barely scratch the surface of what you can what you can do in here. But I hope it gives you a firm uh, foundation today um, that that will uh, see you see you making excellent things. So, so we're pushing this thing through, and a very classic form of reveal is to just have this thing uh, animate up, and we are going to add to this. There we go. We'll make sure that you're seeing. Uh, seeing things in its very natural, uh, natural state. Um, so we are going to be adding to this the property of opacity. So we're adding the opacity in here. And the opacity we're going to put down to zero. And so now it's like it's rising up uh, out of the darkness here. Oh, so it's rising up like that. Now, we talked about easing in terms of the text, but you can also simply ease these keyframes, ease these keys. Hmm. Say that. Uh, say that a lot of times fast, right? Um, so if you start easing these keys, then the value of this offset is slowing as it gets over here, and um, this is now impacting the character of the animation again. It's another layer of nuance, right? So maybe you ease it, maybe you don't. I like to ease. I like to keep it easy. So that's so what we animate those. Also, I'm going to animate the end here. I'm going to animate the end of the range to expand from 25 up to 50. So what's happening? What's happening over the length and breadth of this animation? Well, I'm going to ease these two. So when you ease, you can just select keyframes and hit F9. Uh, I, have, I have a fancy mouse, so I put a little button on the side that 
that just has F9 mapped to it. I'm very clever like that. So, so by expanding the range as this moves through, it becomes softer as the animation progresses. So when you're thinking about animating things and the motion of them and how they all work together, you want to think about complementary and contrasting forms of motion. Always think about that. And <laughs> please seize your keys and I'll seize your fleas. Uh, Joe, uh, Joe, you're <laughs> now you're cracking me up in the chat. Mm. Now, we've animated once, right? We've, we've done this once. Let's go ahead and duplicate this animator. Okay, we select the animator over here and we go Command or Control D to create a second one, okay? And in this animator, if we just leave them on top of each other, they're just compounding each other like this. Ah, now, now instead of pushing things 200, they're pushing them uh, 400, 200 and then 200 again, right? Well, I'm going to change the position from 200 to negative 50, all right? Now they're running at the same time and they're countering each other. Well, if I hit the U key, it's gonna bring up um, all the keyframes. So I shall select these keyframes and I will push them into the future. Push them off a little bit, like this. So now that's, that's what's going on. Oh, I have to go in here to make some edits. Doop, doop, doop. So let's see, that's happening. <laughs> ah, yes, I need to remove the opacity. I'll delete that. So I've deleted the opacity from animator two because it doesn't need to be controlling the opacity. I just want it to mess with the position. And Ali is asking, what is the frames per second of this composition? We are working um, and we are working in Composition settings, we're working in 24 frames a second, but because you're watching this on a live stream, things, ugh, the internet's the internet's pretty clogged up right now. Um, so it could be local bandwidth, it could be, uh, could be streaming out of here. I mean, according to stream health, very good, no dropped frames. So we're, we're nailing it. <laughs> so, um, so here we go. What's coming on with this? Now I will say if on your machine, when you're doing this locally, um, things seem uh, chunky or um, like they're clicking along, it could be your preview and render situation. So if your bar up here at the top of the timeline is not green, um, that's because those frames are not cached and therefore your computer is going to have to think about them a little bit and then it'll cache them and you'll be fine. So we've offset uh, these numbers and it's whoosh, it's it's a nice little whip that it's coming down. I like this and now I'm going to duplicate that one more time get a third animator in the mix and It's going to go the opposite direction. We're, we're whipping back And now I'm going to toggle up these keyframes. I'm going to move them a little bit like this so the way I've got these staggered there's a lot of um, there's a lot of nuance uh, that goes on in here, so we're staggering them off the off the start, and we'll probably want to stagger them off the end as well. So let me just space these out, um, and here we go, Whoops, like this. Now here's here's a little tip uh, about managing your keyframes. You can select a bunch of keyframes. Whoop. You can hold down the Alt or Option key, and then you can give them a pull. You just grab the first or last keyframe, give them a pull, and it'll stretch them away from each other. Whoosh. And that can really help to, in this case, relax uh, the beginnings and endings uh, of things. So now we end up with this nice wave. <laughs> Catch the wave. Now. I know we, we don't have a we don't have a huge amount of time. Someone's asking that they 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 missed most of the stream. Ah, um, well, don't worry. It's going to be archived uh, for all time and all space here on on the Behance Live. Uh, Adobe Live is always here for your viewing pleasure. Um, and I'll say this: um, coming up next after this is a, is an even more you know more days and, and hours of, of excellent content with other fantastic creators. Uh, specifically, as a creative challenge after this, I think you should. Stick around if you've, if you've never touched uh, Photoshop or Lightroom. I think you're going to love that. Um, but, so we've got this waving on, which is great. Now, 
something we talked about in the beginning. I know it, for people who are coming in late, this will be a this will be a bit of a shock. We've animated everything using a percent, right? That means that I can go in here and I can type in something new. Some something new. And you'll notice that it animates in the exact same way because we've done it all with percent, right? Because we're working with percent of characters. So whatever you type in here is going to behave in that way, right? So that's something that you really want to consider when you're when you're doing your tech stuff. Will the text be changed later? And if you're making templates, if you're making mogurts, if you are creating something that you're just going to use placeholder text and maybe you're going to put in someone's, you know, first name, last name, you know, if, if this is the kind of graphic that you're going to make, maybe you're creating lower thirds, maybe you're creating title graphics, maybe you're starting a Twitch stream and you need to have some excellent graphics come on to show your name, um, then this is going to be the, the kind of thing that you want to think about. Because if you have guests and stuff on, then um, you definitely want to be, be able to update these graphics quickly. So that's one of the powers of the text animator is that the animation is procedural and the inputs you change will will allow you that flexibility uh, to change people's name. Or if you're or if you're like me and you are truly brutal at spelling um, and uh, often a producer will have to come around and correct uh, how I have spelled things, <laughs> then this is this is fantastic. So nothing's baked in, nothing's destroyed. After Effects is non-destructive, which is why I like it so much. Uh, anything that's non-destructive uh, is my favorite. So, uh, so that's that's what we're talking about percentage-wise, making this stuff happen. Um, can you add as many range selectors as you want? Yes, you can. In fact, you can. So, uh, in the chat, uh, Newer is asking about um, range selectors. So. You notice that that I in this duplicated the animator three times. We end up with three copies of the animator. Now within the animator, you can have multiple range selectors, and we talked a little bit about here in the advanced of a range selector that we can set them to add, we can set them to subtract. Um, range selectors behave um, in a boolean operation with each other, adding to or subtracting from. Uh, the text and with each other. They can also do intersections, uh, difference. So um, you can do a lot of things, very complex things with range selectors when you start playing around with that. Um, that is that is definitely a discussion uh, for another day, for sure. That is like uh, that is like uh, double advanced. <laughs> That's a double advanced range selector talk uh, doing that. But if you feel confident with the basics, definitely check it out because uh, like we said, you can really start to do some very interesting things uh, as you're pushing combinations of animators through the text, uh, changing them uh, procedurally with these. Think of, I guess the best way to think of animators is like instructions. And you're pushing instructions through and it's who receives the instructions and how much. And you're you're deciding, you know, the band, who who am I selecting and, and how big and, and in what way. Um, so that's... I feel like I've just made range selectors more complicated here at the end. Oops. Um, so, but I want to finish this up. I want to, I want to finish this up and get us where we're going uh, with this. And part of that is starting to animate more properties. So animating the text alone is great, but we should animate the other properties as well. So like we said, every layer has other properties. And in particular, I'm going to animate the anchor point and I'm going to animate the opacity. Again, if you're coming in late, you can just click the stopwatch and it'll start animating things. So that's uh, that's what you want to be doing. Now, because there are so many properties on a layer, I only want to look at the ones I've set keyframes for. I hit the U key on the keyboard. There's all the things that have keyframes. Uh, we hit U for Uber frame. Um, you can hit U U twice to call up everything that has changed about the layer. But again, just press U once. And there you go. You're going to get all the things you've set keyframes for, nice and simple. We're trying to we're trying to reduce the complexity in our lives. And right here, this is a great way to do it. Only look at what's up. Yes, uh, multiple multiple range selectors. Ali is confusing, very confusing. Um, and I'll say that 
multiple range selectors is confusing because it's also invisible. You know, when we look at Boolean operations in Illustrator, you know, shape A plus shape B, that makes sense. Shape A intersects shape B. I know this. Um, but when it's uh, invisible thing intersect invisible thing, wha what, what this, what, what happening? It, it, trust me, confused me for a long time. <laughs> the only difference is that uh, I've been using this program for uh, way, way too long. Oh boy, this is why I keep my hair short so you don't, you don't know my real age. Um, so we wanted to animate the anchor point and the opacity over time. So this text is bringing itself on in a nice way. People are going to read it and then I'd like it to go away. So I'm going to make it go away by using just regular opacity and fading the whole thing out. So I'm dragging a keyframe out here, setting this keyframe down here out to zero, and I'm gonna ease both of those. Easy ease both of those. Now, as you can see, ah, nice relaxed fade out. Hmm, isn't that nice? So maybe I'll make that even bigger. And I wanted to animate the anchor point over time. So I'm animating the anchor point instead of the position. Why? Why Why animate anchor point not position? Right. That's probably the big question that's on everybody's mind. I'm animating the anchor point so that later I can move the position. Hmm. So as you can see, I've animated the anchor point from 0, negative 50 at the start to you know, zero comma 50 at the end. So it's moving from down to up. It's continuing to just rise as it goes, okay? So I'm going to ease the end keyframe there just so it's ah, having a nice, like it's lifting on a cloud, right? How nice is that? And then over time, it animates away. While we're here and we're talking about text, it's really important that I talk to you about readability and I talk to you about accessibility. Um, if you are watching this and you turn on subtitles, uh, you get to enjoy uh, a little bit of accessibility, such as the, um, uh, the subtitles and the closed captioning that's coming up live on the video, impressive technology. But when we think about, um, about uh, all of these things, you know, it's important to remember that if you're putting text on screen, I hope you're doing it so someone can read it, right? So always think about how long it needs to be up there. The general um, uh, guideline we say is if you can read it out loud twice, that's how long you want it to be up there. So you may need to adjust that because you want to think about the person with uh, maybe the, the lowest um, kind of reading comprehension uh, levels is what you want to get into. So always think about that. Um, and so there we go. First name, last name comes on, fades off. Um, now, uh, Anastasia is asking, um, th they need advice uh, where and how to start learning this program. Hang out with us today and tomorrow. We're covering a lot of the basics. Um, animating a character, uh, she's asking, she tried to animate a character and uh, understood that I can't do anything without creating shapes, etc. Well, that's partially true. Um, after Effects can be very intimidating uh, for people, um, mostly because there's so much all at once. And in order to get uh, somewhere, we need a lot of foundational things. We can't really talk about animating until we talk about keyframes. And we can't really talk about keyframes until we talk about properties. We can't talk about properties until we talk about layers. So in order to animate a character, which will probably include a lot of inverse kinematics and forward kinematics and rigging, whoa, whoa, we're, we're so many layers deep at that point in order to accomplish our goal of doing that. But by taking things in discrete chunks, we can start to build up the core competencies that we need. So for example, today we're talking about the text animator, right? And the text animator is a foundational tool that we would use if we wanted to animate titles, if we wanted to animate social media ads, if we wanted to animate lower thirds, right? The end goal is to make make a title, right? But in order to do that, we need to understand the text animator, we need to understand the text tool, we need to understand keyframes, and we need to uh, we need to sort of move all of those ideas um, forward, and it, it it's building a lot of layers, like layer on layer of, of skill. Now, it can seem intimidating, right? It can seem very intimidating, all these things that we have to layer on. But 
you know, taking it one little step at a time. And I think most importantly, being kind to ourselves, um, to, to not expect ourselves to jump, um, jump all the way ahead, you know, so that we, that we take it in little bites. Maybe we start, if you want to animate a character, you start with a pre-made character. Don't draw it all yourself. Start with, start with one uh, that's already been drawn for you, right? And, and start going in that direction. Most especially because when we talk about let's, let's animate blank, we get into, oh, there's 10 different ways. Uh, there's like 10 different ways to make that happen. Right. There's there's so many different methods and tools. You might do a puppet style. You might actually just use the puppet pin tool. You might uh, you might animate using the paths. You might animate using position and rotation. Um, and you have to start making all of these uh, choices that are hard to inform. Right. But uh, we are getting in towards the end of the program. We're wrapping it up here in about ten minutes. So uh, it is a great time to kind of recap what we've done and to kind of talk you back through for those of you coming in late or for those who uh, uh, who have maybe missed a little bit of the steps uh, as to what we were talking about in here. So the big things that we were talking about were, were concepts like uh, the range selector and um, that, that all of the animation we're doing in... Uh, <laughs> Will I give you homework for tomorrow? Your homework for tomorrow is to is to create a title um, using the text animation tools. Bring the text on in a way, and then and then make it go away. Um, you know, bring text on, take text off. Simple simple assignment, right? Um, I I assign very brutal homework, as you can tell. But try to do it several different ways, and try to really explore the tool and what it can do. I won't be I won't be marking it. No one's going to get a grade on this stuff. But but you should you should definitely do it and share it at me on Twitter at EC Abrams on there. Share it at me. Tag me on Instagram at EC Abrams on there as well. And uh, I'll have a look. I'd like to see what you make. But I want to recap where we've been today and what we were talking about. Today we were just talking about the text animator, just getting into the basics and trying to create this. So from the start of the thing, let's poke the eyes out of that one, we started by talking about uh, the, the range selector and all of the component parts that go into it. We talked a little bit about the advanced tab here, but the big thing that we talked about was what the range selector means. So the range that we are selecting, and you can see it here as I zoom in here, is between these two lines. That is the area that we have selected of the text. I'm gonna, I gotta, I gotta take a drink of water because my throat is getting very dry. Well, I have to make sure I swallow away from the microphone. So. So the range selector is really only selecting what we want to apply change to. So here we are selecting between these two bars. The position of those bars is determined here by the start and the end and the offset. In this example, we're animating the end and the offset. So we're increasing the range over time and we're pushing that range through, we're pushing the range through the text. Now, when you get into the advanced, then we are describing <laughs> that we're, sorry, uh, Paco just made me laugh again now, because <laughs> I'm always telling people to stay hydrated. <laughs> okay, so uh, here in the advanced uh, area, this is describing uh, how, the, the how of this stuff. And for example, the range selector what are we, how are we defining it? Are we using percentage or are we using the index? Now index means counting. If we were to do the index of the characters, we would be counting all the characters. You know, this is one, two, three, four, and so on. So we'd be, that's the, the units that we would be, we would be talking about. Um, and um, what we want to do is, is define how we're gonna select things. So that's what we're saying here. And we're doing it by percentage and we're doing it by character. Um, and we're, the mode, the mode is, you know, are we, are we, the thing that we select is that the thing we want to change? Is that the thing we want to exclude? Is that, um, 
Do we want that? Do we not want that? So whenever you select something, you could be saying, I'm selecting it because I want to change it. Or you could be saying, I'm selecting it because it should remain the same. So think about that when you're thinking about adding and subtracting. Am I adding what's between here to my selection? Am I subtracting it from my selection? Okay. Then we get down into the shape. We talked about square. Square is the default, but we changed to ramp up. And, you know, we get, we got into all the options and what all those meant, but we chose ramp up because we want to be pushing a smooth and interesting, uh, gentle wave through this. Um, and so then what we'll be doing, uh, is we talk about easing. So when the easing is off, when the easing, uh, you know, when these are both at zero, it's very linear and very clunky. So we want to ease things to give a little bit of, get a little flavor in here. Now, we didn't, um, <laughs> let's see, uh, da, 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 da. ease, shape, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so, the, I mean, the other thing we, we didn't really talk about is smoothness, but the smoothness is sort of, um, doesn't does not go with ramp up or ramp down, but uh, but instead goes with the square, and you can smooth off the square. Uh, but uh, now I'm distracting myself. Um, <laughs> all right, when we're seeing people in the chat who are no longer uh, scared of After Effects, I hope that's true for a lot of people. Um, but yeah, so we talked about our our easing now. I didn't, we didn't talk about the randomized order, and we won't be talking about the randomized order because I want. I want you to feel kind of in control uh, of things. And then once, you're, once you've once you got firm control, then we just hit this randomized order. Now, <laughs> check out what happens when I hit the randomized order button. It is taking my carefully curated stuff and, uh, and just uh, uh, putting it all over the place. It's <laughs> just randomizing what is being affected. It's no longer, because we're working with percentage, right? It's just randomizing where that percentage is. So... That's a whole other ball game, um, but that's what we got into with our range selectors. That's what we got into with the advanced stuff. Then we talked a little bit about um, we talked a little bit about duplicating this. We talked a lot about easing. We talked about what it means to ease something, which I think is very important, um, especially now. Um, and oh, I'm so great! To, it's so great to see people in the chat talk about. You know that that now After Effects is looking front more friendly because we're gonna we're gonna keep doing this tomorrow. We got more things to talk about uh, coming up tomorrow with this. Um, speaking of ease, we talked about this graph editor a little bit, and I know the graph editor can be scary. You toggle it on and off uh, right here, and the graph editor is used to look at how values change over time or how speed changes over time. For example, so I can I'm switching us to a value graph here. And you can see visually how a property is changing over time. I think it's very valuable to uh, to open up uh, to open up the graph editor early to really understand what is happening and why a change might be happening. So um, it's going to be it's going to be great to to explore this and really understand. But in the graph editor, not only can you see what's happening, but you can alter what's happening. So when you're thinking about easing, just remember that it's these handles in this graph. If something is linear, it, 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 this would be a line. But if something is eased, it's going to be a curve. And if you think about you're going down a hill, you think about you, you are, um, yeah, if you're, if, you're on a, if you're on a toboggan, that's a Canadian conveyance, and then you slide on down the hill, if this is a sharp drop off, ouch. But if it's nice and eased, ha, ah, you get a nice smooth transition. So, you know, likewise, you could have a real cliff like this. Ugh, that's that's quite a cliff. So that's not what we want at all. No cliffs. No, no. Easy. Keeping it keeping it easy. So, that's uh that's what we're saying today. So, um so that kind of brings us in to the end of it. I hope that this has helped you get more familiar with uh, After Effects. I hope it's helped you get more familiar um, with um, with motion design. This is some basics of the text animator. And I hope you, you start playing around 
with the text animator and start making things. Like I said, if you start making some things uh, with After Effects, I want you to, you know, send them at me. Uh, we don't have a specific challenge up right now about this, but I'd love to see what you make. Um, and, uh, you know, ooh, this did not mean to be very triggering with uh, with the curves, so sorry. Uh, but we will, uh, you know, we, we have full control over our world in After Effects. It can be whatever you want, and I, I hope you really make it your own. Um, and so that'll be it for me. There's a rich full day of activities coming up. Do stick around because there is a Photoshop challenge after this with Voodoo Val. She is amazing. And you should uh, you should stick around and spend the rest of your day with us here on Behance Live, here with the Adobe Live program. The team is fantastic and you're in good hands with us. So thank you again for hanging out with us. Thanks for, for spending some time with me. It's really fantastic. Um, and uh, and it is it is amazing. I'm I'm glad you came here to share this with me, and that uh, I'm able to to share this together. So uh, we'll see you tomorrow for more as we we move into animated and looping backgrounds. Tomorrow you'll be making cool cool gifs cool gifs in no time. Thanks again for watching, and uh, we will see you real soon.